Hello maths fans, Dr Tom Crawford here at the University of Oxford and today we're doing an integral from the MIT integration B. The integral we're looking at is the following. We want to integrate from 0 to infinity 1 divided by 2 plus cosh of x with respect to x. Now this is going to involve a lot of steps all of which I will talk through. But before I go through that, let's just check what the answer should be. And for that, I'm going to use the Maple Calculator app on my phone. Opening the app on my phone and selecting the camera icon at the top of the screen will actually allow me to take a photo of the integral that we want to calculate. So this will then appear in the calculator app and it gives me the solution. And if I then click on the footprints icon to see the steps involved in that calculation, it will indeed give me a breakdown step by step of how the solution was obtained. Now if we scroll right to the bottom of this, we can see the final answer in a natural logarithm form, which is the one I'm going to use here. And this tells me that I should get the answer of the square root of 3 divided by 3 and then the natural logarithm of 1 plus root 3 on the numerator and on the denominator we get root 3 minus 1. So according to the Maple Calculator app the answer to this integral is given here by this function. Now we know what the answer should be Let's try to solve the integral for ourselves and hopefully we can end up with the same answer. Now looking at this expression, my first thought is to actually replace the hyperbolic cos or the cosh function with its definition in terms of exponentials. So I'm going to start there. So this will now become the integral from 0 to infinity, 1 divided by 2 plus cosh of x. Now cosh of x is actually equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2, like so. Now we can tidy this up a little bit if we multiply through by 2 on the numerator and the denominator. This becomes a 4 and then this 2 disappears. So that makes it look a little neater. And then something that's a very useful trick when you have an exponential function where you have a positive and a negative e to the x and e to the minus x. What can sometimes really help here is to actually multiply through by e to the power of x because it will remove this term and leave you with just positive powers of the exponential. So I'm going to do that as well. So that's going to now give me the integral from 0 to infinity of 2 e to the x multiplying the numerator and then if I multiply the denominator by the same thing I get 4 e to the x plus e to the x times another e to the x you add your powers when they are indices so that will become e to the 2x and then the last term becomes just plus 1. Now at this point we need to make a substitution and the obvious thing to try is to let u be equal to e to the x because we have this term repeating in several places. So if we do that and let u equal e to the x then differentiating du by dx is e to the x so du is e to the x dx. And then in terms of my limits when x is infinity u is going to therefore go all the way up to infinity as well and then when x is equal to 0, u is equal to e to the 0, which is 1. So u is going to go from 1 to infinity. So when we make that change of variable or that substitution, we have the integral from 1 to infinity now. The numerator is just 2 du. And the denominator, well, we've got an e to the x, which is 4u. And then we've got this e to the x all squared which is e to the 2x. So that's a u squared. So this is why this substitution helps because we get this polynomial function, quadratic function of u 
on the denominator. So what we want to do now is to try and complete the square on the denominator to try and get something squared plus or minus a number and then we're probably going to have to make another substitution. At least that's where I think this is heading. Looking at the quadratic function on the denominator, we can try to complete the square. So u squared plus 4u plus 1 is equal to u plus 2 squared. So that gives us the u squared plus the 2u plus another 2u gives us plus the 4u. But then we have plus 4, so then we have to subtract off 3. Now, in terms of being able to then make a substitution, what we actually want is for this number, the thing we're subtracting, to be 1. And then we can make use of some of our trigonometric or hyperbolic identities. So here, what we're actually going to do is if I divide this whole thing by root 3 here, which is the same as factorizing out that 3, and then outside of the whole thing, we put this factor of 3. So now, when I expand out this bracket, I'll get the u plus 2 squared all over 3, 3's cancel, minus 1 becomes minus 3. So this is now a true statement. So plugging this over, or using this now in our integral, we've got the integral from 1 to infinity. Now I've got the 3 outside there, so I can put the 2 thirds on top, like so. And then on the bottom, I'm left with u plus 2 all over root 3, all squared, minus 1. And that's with respect to u. So completing the square, but also making sure this number here was a 1, helps us to get to this situation. Now we need to decide what the appropriate substitution is going to be for this variable. So what we want is to let u plus 2 divided by root 3 be equal to something. And we want that something minus 1 to be part of a trigonometric or hyperbolic identity. Now if you give this a little bit of thought, what we want here is actually going to be cosh. Because when I substitute in for this to be cosh of y, I have a cosh squared minus 1, which is equal to shine squared. And the derivative of cosh is also shine. So if we formally now make this substitution, so if this is u, then if I now do du, that's going to be root 3 times shine of y dy. So, and then for my limits, in fact, I'm going to get from when that's 1, so I need u plus 2 over root 3. So the u is now 1, so that's 1 plus, so that's equal to root 3, must be cosh of y. So my limit there is y is now r cosh, or inverse cosh, of root 3. It's going to be my lower limit. And then when u is infinity, then cosh of y must also be equal to infinity. So y is infinity. Cosh will indeed go to infinity as y does. So putting all of that in, I think what I'm going to get is now the integral to infinity, where my lower limit is the inverse hyperbolic cos function of root 3, or r cosh of root 3. Now, I've still got a factor of 2 thirds, so let's just bring that out. And then I've got here that du is this root 3 times shine of y dy. And then on the denominator, I've got cosh squared of y minus 1. Now, remember, I picked this precisely because cosh squared y minus 1 is actually shine squared of y. So let's put that in. And then, of course, what's going to happen here is this shine cancels with that squared. So what we're left with, and simplifying the root 3 as well, is actually going to be 2 
divided by root 3, the integral from r cosh of root 3 to infinity of 1 over shine, but 1 over shine is cosh of y dy. Now cosh is a standard hyperbolic function, which means we can look up the integral. And if you do this, there are several different forms. And what we want to do here is pick the form of the integral of cosh that's going to be most appropriate or most helpful for our particular calculation. Now, of course, all of these forms are equivalent, so you will still get to the same result in the end, but to make things easier for ourselves, there's a few important pieces of information we can spot in our particular integral. Now, the first one is that r cosh of root 3, this is actually greater than 1, which means that our domain here is from something larger than 1 up to infinity. So that just helps us when deciding on modular signs and different things when we do that integral. Now, the second thing is going to be the fact that this is the inverse of a cosh. Because in our choice of possible ways of writing the integral of cosh, one of them contains cosh of y. Now that'll be really helpful because the cosh will cancel with the r cosh to just give us root 3. So taking all of that into account, the version that we want here is going to give us 2 over root 3, and then we're going to integrate cosh, and we're actually going to get r cosh of cosh of y. And that's going to be evaluated at these two limits, r cosh of root 3 and infinity. Now this of course is not a nice expression and possibly not something that most people would know, but it is going to help us here again because the cosh and the r cosh are going to cancel out now when we substitute in for those limits. In order to work out the limit at infinity, we're actually going to have to do a little bit of algebra. So when we substitute in, we get cosh of infinity, which is infinity. So we want to know the value of x that satisfies this equation. We want x to be equal to inverse cosh of infinity. So if I now take cosh of both sides, that means I want to know cosh of x. When is cosh of x equal to infinity? And cos here is equal to cosh of x divided by shine of x. So we want to know when that is equal to infinity. And we can see that that will happen exactly when shine of x is 0. So that's when shine of x is 0. And that's when x is 0. So the value at infinity of our function here is actually just going to be 0. And then we've got minus the second limit, so that becomes a plus. So then we are going to end up with 2 over root 3, r cosh. And then when we substitute in the r cosh limit into here, we've got cosh of r cosh, they cancel, and we just get root 3. So this is actually now the closed form expression of our integral. And at the moment, it doesn't quite look like the logarithm. However, because these hyperbolic functions are related to exponentials, the inverse hyperbolic functions are, of course, then related to logarithms. So what we just need to do as a final step is to convert this into a logarithm. The formula that we need here is the following. R cosh of x is equal to a half times the log of x plus 1 over x minus 1. So here we can apply this formula to our function and we'll get 2 over root 3 times a half. Here our x is going to be root 3, so that's the log of 1 plus root 3 divided by root 3 minus 1. And we can see this result is indeed the same as what we got 
over here from our Maple Calculator app. If you've enjoyed this problem and would like to see more like it, then do check out the worksheet that I've put together in Maple Learn featuring some of my favorite integrals from the MIT Integration B. You can access the worksheet for free by clicking on the link in the video description. Have fun. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon. Take care.